Hello, everyone. Marco Levette here from Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation. Well, we are back. It's panel number three. We are here because Womel decided that they were going to follow and honor 25 powerful women the month of March. Let me tell you a little something about Womel, the company. It was formed in 2016 because the founder, Nagelia Desravines decided that she really wanted to help small business women, women in business to gain a good foothold so that they'll know success, mompreneurs, small business owners. And she actually set up what I like to call an academy, a place where you can come and learn, ask questions. Little did she know out of Womel would be born the print and digital magazine, WOM Lead. And WOM Lead is a women's leadership magazine. From cover to cover, there are conversations about leadership and leading the way women lead, covering the topics that, that we have to address in our form of leadership, in our shoes of leadership. So thank you. Nagalia, thank you for forming Womel. Had you not done so, we would not be here today. So the panelists are as follows today. Dr. Stephanie Atkinson Austin, she says that we can call her Dr. D. We have Charlotte Elizabeth Terrell. We have Kern Crockett Cherry. We have Mary H. Fernandez and Sharon Ringer. Let's get started with the very first question. And that first question being collaborations. Are they currency for entrepreneurs? What are the pros and what are the cons? That's our very first question for panel number three. Well, and see what you bring to the table, see what I bring to the table and leave some of the personal stuff aside. Because when personal go into business, there's, there's almost a mess. Mm -hmm. So that's why that cool down period or that reevaluate what went good this week, what went good thus far, what should we change, what's working, what's not working, and then let's go. Because we're in a contract, but we got to keep it workable, cooperative relationships, collaboration. We're working together. No one's over each other or under. We're peer to peer. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, definitely. It's very clear, very clear. Which brings me to another question, and maybe Charlotte, you want to answer this being a, coming from a clinical therapist uh, background. If we're going to do peer to peer, and when we decide that we're going to work in a collaboration with some someone, this that's a usually a huge project. You have the goal, you have the beginning, the middle, and the end. But what do we do? And how do we maintain that peer-to-peer -peer respect and communication? And we are, I don't know that all of us are on the same level emotionally, which we spoke of before we started recording, but I can't help but think that that's very, very important. How do we react and maintain the, um, maintain the relationship yeah. when we don't have peer-to-peer -peer equal, emotional intelligence. How does that work out for us? I, well, for me, I was thinking of an example when um, Mary was speaking and I had a person who I thought we would be perfect partners. He was a little bit older. He was retired military. And it's a little bit different working with men because um, I just thought, you know, this would work. I've known him a long time and he probably is serious about doing what I was doing. And he would be a good partner for me to have. Well, it turns out it was not a good partnership. We were at Waffle House one time and next thing I know his girlfriend is walking in and I'm just like, you're not serious about what I'm passionate about, which is fine, but I should have prayed about it and made sure that we were in alignment before I got into the partnership with him. But it turns out because of the fact that we had such a close knit relationship and went years back, I could just say, you know what, you fired. And that was the end of that. 
<laughs> but you have to be a little bit more diplomatic with other people. And I think that you have to really pray and go with your gut. And um, I think Dr. A mentioned that discernment, really knowing is this a, a partnership that I want? Do I trust them with my vision? And can I be vulnerable enough to be the soft place for them to fall on with theirs? And if you feel like you cannot be in alignment and that is not something that you can do with them, then you can respectfully decline to work with them. Because like I said, and I say all the time, no is a complete sentence. And I've heard that and I'm gonna run with it because it is. And you just say no and you move on. And a lot of times with my therapeutic hat, I try to keep it off because I know that coaching is not therapy. It's completely different. But when I see that there are emotional barriers that are keeping you from being able to work towards your goals that you've set as a coach and a client, then I have to determine, is this a workable relationship or do you need to be referred for additional pro professional help? before we can move on to the next level. And again, you respectfully communicate this to the person and decide, do you wanna go on and have a therapist included? Or do you wanna just go and get your help and then come back and we can work towards your goals? But if we're moving along peer to peer. Peer to peer. That's where we really we have really to dig have to in. Be in alignment, absolutely. All money is not good money. All right. opportunities are not the opportunity. Is right. that what I hear everybody say? Absolutely. 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 I had a, um, another partnership where somebody had brought to our attention that maybe we could work with swingers. I'm not going to even get into my opinions about that. However, that's, a, that's not something that is in alignment with what I wanted to do. So I had to tell them, and if you're, if you're on board to do that, then maybe this is not a partnership that we should be in. So I know a lot by trial and error that you really have to make sure that you do an extensive inventory on what is in alignment with your peer and what is not, what will work and what boundaries need to be set. You guys, you know, when we get ready to hire a housekeeper or a coach or we're getting ready to hire anybody, graphics person, whatever, we always vet that person. Do you guys vet that person that you're about to sign on the dotted line with and say, we're going to start this project from A, B, Z, all A to Z? Anybody else do that? I, I think if you're not, you probably have learned to do it. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, Especially if it's uh, something that's going to require a lot of your time over a year or so. Uh, I've been in a few collaborations for years and Unfortunately, in ca collaborations, you can outgrow each other too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, collaborations are relationships. You you should look and make sure that you're equally yoked. Mm -hmm. uh, a question about energy? Yeah, that tends to show up in a big way, especially when you're producing uh, things that require a lot of energy, like conferences and events. Uh, when you don't want to be the person that's the only one producing, you know, and then you're the one that's doing all the work and your partners are sitting on the sideline, you might need to reevaluate that, that relationship. Mm -hmm. And then maybe, you, you know, some relationships you just can't get quite out of. So you may have to downsize what you're doing with those people. There's a lot of things you can do to control how that pulls on you because if you're partner and collaborate with somebody who doesn't care as much as you, then you really need to pull, you know, tell, you know, pull it back a little bit because it will drain you. It'll drain you, your business, your other businesses, your other relationships and all that type of stuff. So how do you come into a relationship? You do need to evaluate that person. You do need to make sure that they're emotionally their EQ, their EI is up there, you know, because it is going to require you to do more if they're not able to do and pull their weight. And I'm going to say this. I know we often say competition over collaboration, but y'all competition can drive you too, right? So it's okay to have a little competition as long as it's good competition, right? You don't have to hate on the other person just because they're doing better than you. I think, I think for women, we need to learn to just pull each other up, no matter what that other person is doing to be successful. You can all get there 
you just may not get there at the same time, you know? So I, I, you know, I look at collaboration over competition and I'm like, they both have their purpose. They both can drive you. They both can encourage you to do more. May, okay, that person has leveled up their game. What am I doing over here? Maybe I'm sitting on the sideline and I need to look back and say, well, I need to step it up over here because they, they got it going on. So for me, I encourage people, competition is like I'm in healthcare. I've watched my competitors. We've all been around 20 something plus years. And uh, I've been in a situation where I'm like, we can be in the same space. So I invite them, come on. So when they see them, they see me. And that encourages people to say, hmm, maybe I need this service, right? When you're the only one out there, a lot of times people don't think they need your service. Well, you're the only one. I don't need to, when I see four or five, maybe I need to check into that. That something must be going on. I might need that service. So I always say, look at that. Cause I think as women, when we say competition over collaboration, it's because we're trying to say, don't be aggressive, be lateral, work with women, work. Yeah, we need to work with women, but we also need to step up our game because that's how men work. Men don't work and worry about competition. They work, they're worried about how can I get to the next level? So, you know, you gotta, we, I think yeah. as women, we have to reassess what aggressive really means. You know, why? Because when we're not competitive, a lot of times when we don't have any aggression to go mm. to the next level and we get left behind. Kern, you bring, okay. that is excellent that you bring that up. And I see heads, but we're going to keep that conversation going because if you're not hungry for it, then you're going to stop. Somebody else chime in. I see heads. I see. Go so, for it. Go for it. So one of the things. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead, doctor. I was going to say, one of the things I would like to piggyback off of was if we take the uh, analogy um, of um, Charlotte and uh, building what if we expanded that to we're having a potluck so each of the people coming to the table part of that network they're bringing something yes and it's a little bit different because how do you have a good potluck or buffet with just one choice of something mm -hmm. and to realize that our collaborations could be just that part of our networking um i always look at that we all have um our individual strengths and challenges but how can we enhance those or take those challenges and make them into opportunities. And I think part of those opportunities are, are the collaborations and the networking. Um, and as Karen said, don't look at it as, it could be competition. Um, maybe we do need to take a, a personal reflection on what we're doing and how could we do it better? You know, extremely important. Um, so that's what I just wanna chime in with, with that thought. I wanted to say that Sharon is a collaborator expert. And so I was, I hear a lot of you talking about clients and coach and emotional intelligence, but that peer to peer or that person that we're working with, I do more of leadership and personal development. I like to run with giants and develop giants so that they can get in the arena and stand in their personal power and communicate so that when you start communicating, the energy that you send out sideways draws in those powerful women who want to have a conversation with you. But in leadership development, it takes peeling back some layers. It takes a leader and the leader that are being developed. So there's a fellowship. And so in peer to peer is teaching them to rise up, speak up, show up, cooperate, follow through, be accountable, to the team, the organization, and the assignment, and then someone like a collaborator would come in and check the environment and start the conversation. What's working? What's not working? How's this going? What went wrong? What went right? How can we fix it? Okay, back to work. Collaborator. Got you. Got you. Anyone, someone else want to chime in on it? Because I have another question. Pete, just uh, is. I can't hardly hold it. <laughs> Kern, you got something started here. My question is this. Okay. We want to get in these collaborations. Mm -hmm. How obligated is everyone 
to stay, to consistently upgrade your skills, where you show up, how you show out, uh, and all of those things so that you are attractive. Well, someone will say, I saw them on that panel. Oh, I want them to be on my podcast. Oh, I want to be in collaboration with them. I want them on my summit. How obligated are we to not only to ourselves, but to those that we want to attract? Anybody want to pick that conversation up? <laughs> well, you better be visible right now. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. If you're not hopping on panels and speaking on different stages, I say the minimal is two to three times a month, two to three times a month. And I'm talking speaking. And now for the podcast and the magazines and all that kind of stuff, you need to add those in too, because we're in a different time than pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, people were being booked. You know, they were known. It was word of mouth, all that great stuff. That's great. But now is the time of relevance. Are you really relevant right now? Do I really know that you are a speaker? That you're somebody I should be connected to? Why would I be connected to you? Because I have so many people now that I can pick from since we're in that global market, right? So how do you stand out amongst the pack, as we say? You have to be very visible. You have to work at being visible people ask me all the time why why you know why why are you doing so much i'm like because right now is the time to be visible when we go back when 2022 occurs the speakers who are relevant are the ones that are being visible right now how much more so should we be visible if somebody like les brown is speaking five times a day two of them keynotes hello yeah that is that that's that's that man is 75. Him and Dr. Frazier both have let you know I'm 75 and I am just hitting my prime, right? And if they're just hitting their prime, then we need to make sure that we're not, I'm like, either hitch a ride to them or figure out what they're doing and do it too. Because you're not going to get, you're not going to get booked. People are not going to uh, consider you relevant. If all you're doing is what you did pre-COVID, I do two to three events a year. You know, I get paid for those. Well, let's face it. Y'all know the market of speaking is changing. People, people are charging to speak, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the sponsors are not there like they used to. And so you have to become very vigil, uh, visible and intentional in what you're doing. Be intentional where you're making yourself seen, where people are determining, oh, you know what? She's a speaker, by the way. She's also a coach because she does this, that, and this. That's only going to happen if you're being seen, if people are hearing you. Other people are going to talk about you if you're visible. They're not going to talk about you if you're not. I don't care how many collaborations you do. If you're not seen, if you're doing that, I always tell people, if you're doing that behind the scene and you're working in secrecy, working in silence, guess what you're going to be? Out of business. Out of, out of business. Wow. Moving in silence does not work anymore. It does not. There's too many people online and there's too many people that understand that you must be online. Your business needs to be online. You must be out front. You must be seen. So that's, I mean, that's my input. That's my take on the whole situation. You've got to be visible. I'd like to add to what, what, especially because I look at the ladies in this room, we are millennials, but we're not millennials. We just celebrate anniversaries for our 30th birthday, right? So I, hey, I just celebrated 25th anniversary for my 30th, but I'm still not a millennial. However, if I'm not getting out there with these millennials who are remaining relevant, I mean, perfect example, Cardi B. We're so worried about what's going on and we're, 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 we're graceful with it because we come from a different era. But what we don't understand is when we're getting out there and trying to compete, because Kern, you hit the nail on the head, we have got to remain relevant for, unfortunately to say, our age. Now, do we have to act like Cardi B? No, but we do have to get out there. And for the lack of better words, we, we just need to not give a crap about what people think of us because 
they don't. And they're, they're, I mean, they're making the money, they're doing the thing. And it's like, we're sitting back and watching it. And it's becoming the talk now. And it's the buzz even through like a lot of the things that I've been doing where we're having to have these hard discussions because, well, I don't know social media and I, I, I don't like social media. I was like, whether you like it or not, it's like, this is business. So we have to take what we like out of it because at the end of the day, I like making a paycheck and I'm going to tell you, I like to eat. I love to eat. So because I need to eat, not, well, I like to eat, but I like certain things. But anyway, that's beside the point. I want food. If I want food, I'm going to have to get out of my own way to be relevant. So I tell everyone that's in our age bracket, th the same thing. It's like, you have to get out there. So it's like, if I could clone what Kern just said, I would take it and play it for all of my members because it's so true. As they all struggle with that and they don't understand relevancy is everything in their business. And in 2022, leadership coaches, they're going to be so not relevant if they don't speak up. Yeah, I believe that. I, I, I'd like to add, Margo, to what Sharon and Kern and everybody was is saying, you indeed do have to keep up with the Kardashians. I mean, you know, honestly, yep. I don't know what their claim to fame is. However, <laughs> you have however. to you have to sift through that. However, comma, you have to sift through the noise and let them know who you are, why you're relevant, and people are now they are at a point where they're hungry for mm -hmm. unapologetic living. They're hungry for somebody that's transparent and yes. somebody that's authentic and somebody that can help them get from where they were or where they are to where they want to be. And they need to be able to see you to know, okay, there is somebody out there that mm -hmm. doesn't just have a claim to fame for having like 10,000 followers on Twitter, but they really are doing stuff and they got something of substance to tell me, to help me because I need help right now. I'm drowning. Right. And people need to see that you are relevant and you're capable of doing that and providing that for them. Standing solid, may I say I agree with you that communication and that connection is currency for us today. Mm -hmm. People are watching us, and if they don't see you, they forget you. When I saw Margot show up in a group teaching her expertise, I was watching. She hit a need that I was ser searching for, just listening to her values and listening to her heart and her history and how she talked she was already filling out the interview form. That's someone I want to work with. I didn't have to know all the uh, other stuff, which some people feel like, oh, I can't bring all this to the table because you got to know that first. Keep it professional. And then connecting with her, we connected to something more powerful. And I think that's the boomerang effect is get in the action, get in the heat of what's going on today and serve people. And that raw Honestly, people are so raw now that they cross all kind of boundaries that we would not mm -hmm. like them to cross. Mm -hmm. And so we're also deciding who we're going to work with and who we're not going to work with. Right. Something as simple as teaching them what people see on your Facebook page, mm -hmm. they're interviewing you. And therefore, friend me, I go to that Facebook page, I see something that's totally out of line with how I think, how I live, how I function. No, delete friend requests. Delete possibility of working together. I don't want to know anything else if you don't have any boundaries that keep my eyes from seeing things I should not have seen if I just went to research you. Makes sense. And we try to tell people that all the time. Uh, once it's out there, you can't pull it back. Ask some of the politicians these days. Uh, it's Once you put it out there, that's, that's it. These are wonderful points that you all are making. I hope people are taking notes and I've been watching find out whether or not there's anyone asking any questions. I don't see any thus far. I just have one final question before we go into the last one that was submitted to you all. How important is it to be ready? I mean, I, you guys, you all really have answered it, but I just like to hear a hard answer. You know, have your high definition pictures ready. You have your bio ready, your media packs ready. You get a call, somebody says, hey, I need you to do this over in Europe. You can zip this right off over to them. Mm -hmm. How important is that even with doing a collaborative uh, work with somebody? Some, somebody want to pick that conversation up? Uh, yeah, I think it, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I, saying, I think it's, it's you know, it, it talks to or speaks to the relevancy. Um, because we're in a digital world um, and technology drives everything pretty much.
that you have to be prepared. It's almost yeah. like um, in the days when we talked about having your resume, having it up to date, before, you know, because if an opportunity arises, you would be prepared. So I think it, it can translate into our digital world. Um, so those things um, that you mentioned, um, high def picture, a, a nice clean updated resume and cover letter um, and being flexible, if you do get that call, you know, on your end, you've done what it needed to, to apply for whatever, maybe a job, maybe to participate in a conference or a workshop, or even a, a venue like this. Um, so I think it's very important. I agree. I agree. My husband Karen. said, oh yeah, go ahead, Karen. That's what I'll do. Yeah, no, you go ahead, Sean. <laughs> no, you go ahead, girl. I, I can remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Oh, I'm definitely, a, but for a person who reviews four to 700 applicants for success, I'm going to tell you, don't send me no phone shot. I don't care if you got an I-12 or whatever the latest <laughs> gadget they have. Do not waste your time thinking that you can send people who request high resolution uh, photos. You need to invest in yourself. When you, when you, um, when a person asks you to send something, it should be, you should be able to do it from your phone if you need to. You should have done enough emails because I have, you know, you can, you can go in and say, let me just forward this email over to them because I'm not going to be back home really soon. So let me send that over to them now. Now, but at minimal on your computer, you should have several professional shots, that's headshot and full body shots that you should be able to send at a moment's notice. Your professional bio, notice I said professional, not written by yourself. We all love to think that we can write bios, but at the end of the day, there are people gifted at all of this stuff that I'm talking about. And it will speak for you long before you enter the room. So you should have both of those things at a moment's notice, at a moment's notice. And suppose, suppose you click, and this has happened to me, I don't know about y'all, but I've clicked on events and they were like, speaker, knows, speed, speaker uh, applications are closing today. Dang. Now you gonna have time to go write your bio? Right. Go take a professional headshot? No, you have to be ready at all times, these are the top two things that everybody, everybody should have. And if you are a speaker or a coach or author, it should literally be sitting there waiting for you to pull it up and send it over to whoever requested. If you're going on a podcast show, headshot bio, please have it ready. And if you're really good, you're gonna have your full bio, you're gonna have your social media bio, you got to have your 150-word bio. If y'all notice, some people have like, like 10 bios, right? Because they know that any moment they have to send it a certain type of bio as requested. So no matter what it is, whether it's a magazine or whatever, it could be your opportunity. So you need to be ready. Think of it as pitching your business at a moment's notice. That's what's essential in order to be prepared to show up on any stage, mm -hmm. any stage. And remember, speaking is not the only stage. You know, magazines are stages, books are stages. At a moment's notice, you could be landing your best opportunity ever. You never know when Oprah's going to call, right? Hello. Exactly. Right, right, right. I used to always tell my boys, the worst opportunity is a missed one. And because I lived with that, it's like, even now, if I, if I don't even carry business cards anymore, because, oh, hold on, let me have your number really quick. And I'll put in hi, Kern, and I'll type A1. A1 will populate the whole doggone thing I need for it to say in my phone. And not only am I sending you a digital message saying it was so lovely meeting you, I really look forward to connecting. Here is my XYZ. So I will send you my VCF along with a digital business card that also has all of the media outlets that I've been on, including channel two and channel seven, and it's gone. So it's like my little, literally it's like Pinterest style, made it in Canva. And it's like, 
people don't understand that you just, and Les Brown says it, you gotta be hungry. Yeah, you do. And it's like, because I'm hungry, like I said, I like food. So because I'm hungry, I have that ready to go. Because the worst opportunity is a missed one. Right, it is, it is. Charlotte? I was just gonna say that one of the things that my husband says is I stay combat ready. And I was like, well, you sound crazy, get out of here. But that's one of the things that made me fall in love with him because we were on our first date and he said, would you like something to drink? And I said, yes, yeah, sure. He pulled some green tea and some water out of his bag and was like, would you like green tea or water? I'm like, this man is prepared. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's one of the things made me fall in love with him. <laughs> But I, I just think it's so important, like everybody has said, it's to be ready, be combat ready, because you never know when that big opportunity is coming and they're not going to wait for you. They're going to move on to the next person. So you got to have it right then and there. I can tell Even everybody. If three in the morning. You're right. You are, you are so right. Because as Kern said, you never know when that deadline is coming up. I know for a fact, there were quite a few people who were not able to be in the 25. This magazine has never done this type of thing before. And a lot of people, they do it. It's traditional. And, and the big magazines do it. Forbes, all of them, you know. But Woman Lead has never done it before. And yeah, there were a lot of people that wanted to make the cut. I even had to apply. Oh yeah, the moderator. I had to apply because it, she's very. She knew what she wanted. She knew what she was looking for, and she wasn't taking any guff from anybody or anything, which is admirable. These are the kind of people that call for. Uh, I need this. I need this. I need this, and you need to be able to get it to them. And all I can say is, you know, congratulations, ladies, because there were many that I saw it, it, they didn't make it unapologetically, you know, and that's how it is when you're dealing with collaborations, when you're working with a list, when you're working with a forward movement of, of some type. Last question. Now I'm looking at the clock here. How do we keep these conversations going? What do, what can we do panelists, individuals, um, as, as entrepreneurs, what can we do so that we keep the conversation going concerning collaborations between women? Anybody want to chime in? I think it's huge to reach out. Um, I know when I got, and that's how I actually met Margot was I was part of that 2020 influential black women you should know on LinkedIn. And I reached out to her, but I didn't reach out to just her. I reached out to all of the women because what I wanted to do was have an intentional conversation and I wanted to know how I could help them in their business. So I feel like we have to be intentional with connecting with other women and helping them to understand that because each of us can change the trajectory of how women do business one person at a time. So if we each stepped out and it's like, you know, so now it's like one in one. Now we show them how to do it. And then they, now we have, you know, another, you know, two women doing it and, and so on. And so it's almost like that commercial where I forget the name of the commercial back in the day where it was like, and so on and so on and so on. It's like, it's just, it just takes one person at a time and just, if you can do one to many, that's great. But I think we need to start making a conscious effort of stepping out of our comfort zone and even having the dialogue on social media and when we're talking to let people know that you know this is how women should be working together. It doesn't have to be cattiness. It doesn't have to be backstabbing. The only reason women are catty is because they don't know anything else. So we don't know any, we don't know better. So, but when you know better, you do better. So if we can start teaching, especially our young people, how to do business. I think that that's even, you know, especially young women, how to do business. I think that that would be huge with showing them how to, you know, have those conversations and learning how to carry themselves. I would say you keep the conversation going. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would say keeping that conversation going is throwing out a wide net, always shaking up the bottom. The bottom is that next generation of leaders, that are out there in the colleges and in the special programs in high school and college, just throwing out that net and creating opportunities for them. And then shaking up the middle, encouraging them and providing them opportunities to be in the midst of information, uh, leaders, business development, personal development, 
just really throw that out there. And then that ready group, the ready group are looking to be polished and shine. I call my experience on social media development, those mentors coaching and polishing and shining me up so that I can show up powerful in a total new world that I was not used to. Social media, don't show up in your pajamas and don't show up in your personal, you know, emotional weaknesses. You have to show up totally ready to communicate, to give and to receive. You know, earlier today, I was communicating with the young men that I had asked to be part of a discussion panel in regards to um, the pandemic and um, where or how did he see himself in the world and what was his perception of how the world saw him and a couple other questions. And so the response was, I'm not sure I can participate because I'm not an expert. So I think part of this leadership and professional growth and development we have to do is we have to, as they say, teach one, each one, teach one, and, and how do you grow? So uh, our conversation went on to, you are the expert of your life. You have had some experiences and observations in life that um, help you get to what we call your way of knowing, your, your development. How, and you could reflect upon that to, how do you see yourself in the world? So if we're going to talk about businesses and organizations and entrepreneurship, how do you see your service or product in the world? How do you make it profitable and sustainable? And I think that goes to you have to network, you have to collaborate, you have to use um, your good sense and, and from coaching, and I think Charlotte talked about this um, as well, your gut feeling about something's right or wrong or good or, or not good for you at the time and the moment. Because I'm a true believer in that everything has a season. Uh, people come in and out of our lives at different points and times for reasons, and, and that's fine. So I, th I think continuing the conversation like we're having today on various topics, um, networking with one another, um, as we've all um, gone round table and, and spoke and addressed various um, questions, you know, certain things from certain people resonate with me. Hmm, I like to follow up with that person. I dig a little bit more, learn a little bit more about that person, that, that that's very, very helpful. And that's how you keep the conversation. And that's how you, um, we change that kind of paradigm practice. It's, it's, it's a practice of women not wanting to network. How, how do we do that? And we're successful at doing it. Gotcha. I hear you. Charlotte? And then Mary, we'll let you have the last word, please. I, I totally agree with Dr. A is just um, ensuring that you're listening with not just your ears, but listening with your, with your heart and determining whether or not these are conversations that should continue and to what degree they should continue. Does that mean we're gonna to work together? Does that mean we're going to collaborate together? Does that mean we're just going to um, maybe give some pointers to each other because we're in a school of it, we're in the life school of education. So we're on a continuum of learning. And so if we can learn from each other, you know, well, I heard Sharon say that she's a collaboration queen. I need to get with her to understand how to do that. Kern said she gets butts in seats. I need to know how to get people in the seats for the next conference that I have. So the people like Dr. A said, who pique your interest and who have something that a value that they add to what you know and what you want to know, that's how you continue those conversations and be willing to learn and willing to share what you have as well. I'd like to say, this has been powerful. The, the speakers, mm -hmm. the talents you bring to the table and the energy, it just leaves your hunger for wanting to know more. I believe legacy is important. It's time to pass the torch, work while you can so that when you cannot, what your legacy has developed and your systems that have been developed will go on without you because you have trained at the next generation of leaders, entrepreneurs, uh, mentors, and coaches, and connect from the heart and your head will guide you because my head is my God and my Jesus. And I believe that nothing is impossible. So working to leave a light or to be a light, to attract those that are looking hungrily for something to help them fit 
that missing link or fill in the hole like I was hungry when I hit social media. My whole system had holes in it. I didn't know how to connect the dots, but I found the women who were throwing their gifts out on the table. So eat from the table of abundance of life and reach out to each other, connect. I hope we stay in touch because this has been so powerful. And the catalyst was this awesome magazine. Margo, I also wanted to chime in as well and just say that, um, you know, I'm a doer. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably less talk more, just creating. I believe that women should, you know, reach back and not just grab one person. They should grab a tribe and pull it along with them. You know, when you, when you reach out and you start helping others, uh, you know, bring their game up, helping others get their visibility and things like that. As a group, as women, we will rise. You know, it's not enough to just be concerned about a few. Uh, and so I know we often talk about what men don't do or what they keep us from doing, but some of that is us. You know, some of it is just blatant, it's women. Women holding women back. You know, let's face it, Hillary didn't get elected because of women. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna point that out. So, you know, that being said, we as women have to stop, you know, pulling each other down and start pulling each other up and create the opportunities. I create events. I don't have to. I don't have to. I have a whole nother business that I run a long time before I started doing events. Uh, create, take opportunity to create something for somebody else. And, and if you create it for yourself, bring some other people with you, right? And take advantage of some of these platforms that are out there, like Clubhouse and some of these other ones, LinkedIn. You know, we got to start educating women to how to up your game, how to collaborate together. Maybe we need to spend more time in showing them. See, I believe if you show them, they'll learn. Most people, you can talk it to death, but if you show them and they see what you're doing, they'll walk in it as well because they're like, okay, that's working for her. So let me try doing that as well. So show them by doing and bring some of them to the table. I know a lot of millennials that don't necessarily fit my cup of tea, but, you know, because they work different, right? Yeah. But I invite them to the table anyway. You know why? Because that's how you grow and that's how things don't die. Yeah, the millennials have the new idea, the new way. And no, they don't think like us baby boomers. They don't think like us one in between them. You know, they do not. But they have fresh ideas. And they're, they're a little different. But that being said, different is good. Because it gets you thinking outside of your comfort zone. We got to stop looking for the comfort in things. Sometimes it'll stretch you to have to help other women. You know, this it can be a little work, but that being said, that's how we all come up. We just have to pull each other up. This has been powerful. I tell you, I thought the last two days were, as they say, the bomb diggity, but these, these you ladies, we need to hear about collaboration from women working in different areas of life. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say except thank you, uh, Womel. Thank you, Wom Lead Magazine, for offering the space for being the catalyst behind these awesome conversations. It is my hope indeed that someone listens and they apply and they reach out to someone on any of these panels that the magazine is offering because the information that was given today comes from experience. It comes from observation. It comes from been there, done that, and you can't pay for that. So let me applaud you ladies. Thank you so much for being here. Let me go through the rostrum one more time. We have Dr. Stephanie Atkinson, Austin, Charlotte Elizabeth Terrell, Kern Crockett Cherry, Mary Fernandez, and Sharon Ringer some awesome ladies that came with it. What I was glad that I didn't hear and I didn't expect that I would, nobody said it's not worth it collaborating with other women. 
Nobody said it's okay for us to go ahead and leave a woman behind. And nobody said that this is not the new currency collaborations. So once again, I commend you all. Give yourselves a hand. We are virtually, I hear a room full of folks giving you all, um, giving you all a eight thumbs up. So I'm Margo Le, Levette. I'm speechless at this time. I tell you, I, I'm so full. I had to put my pen down, stop taking notes. I understand that the magazine is going to have this replay over on YouTube. I'm sure that she will let everyone, the magazine will let everyone know the panelists know how they can get the word out about how you can tune in and, and listen and come with an open heart and an open mind. Because gone are the days when they used to say, women can't collaborate, women can't work together. That's not true. I tell you, I'm a living testimony. Nagalian and I came together on this and it has been nothing but wonderful. It's been a, a life changer for me. I learned a lot. So Thank you for your time. You invested in being in a good place today. Thank you again, panel discussion. Tomorrow, Saturday, we are having the last panel discussion. You, I hope that you already registered. If you haven't, there's still time for you to do so. It's 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time tomorrow, Saturday. We close out this four-point series. And I think that's about it for today. So... Thank you once again. Nagalia, she's in the back there. Do you have anything that you want to add? Absolutely not. I think the ladies uh, did all the talking for, well, not for me, for themselves, actually. They are awesome. Um, Dr. A, thank you so much for all the information. Kern, I love uh, when you are talking, it's, it just sounds so powerful. And Mary, you just look so beautiful and powerful at the same time. People should scared of you, actually. They will think you, she's beautiful. Don't worry. It's okay. Yeah, you should be scared of Mary. Um, Charlotte, and I, I just love all the example with your, how you <laughs> fall in love with your husband. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. And Sharon, thank you. Um, Sharon is all about, she's um, an impossible. And it was kind of funny because I named, um, uh, the panel discussion before I even spoke with uh, Sharon, it was like, oh my goodness, we picked the same thing. So um, thank you everyone. Again, thank you, uh, Dr. A. Thank you, Kar Kern. Thank you, Mary, Charlotte, and Sharon, and Margo. Thank you so much for all you do. I appreciate it. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Let's stay in contact. <laughs>